record to the cloud. So uh, we looked at these examples. Now let's look at another example, which is a little bit unconventional. Um, the number of joints. myself somewhere around here. Let's count the number of joints. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the prismatic joint. And this joint is called a fourth joint or it's a cylindrical joint. It allows two, two motions as you see. It, uh, it's prismatic and also it allows rotation. So it has a degree of freedom of two. It is kind of, uh, you might call it, you have six revolute plus one prismatic plus one cylindrical. So you have eight joints. But the degrees of freedom of each, this sign has, has, these have a degree of freedom one, this has a degree of freedom of two, but in general, so the degree of freedom of total joints is nine, because this has a degree of freedom of two. The number of links, okay, myself, is seven, let's count them. The ground is one, two is here, spring doesn't matter. Three is here, four, five, six, seven. And this ground is again a ground. So L is seven. So J is one degree of freedom is joints is one. Uh, two degree of freedom is, is so called the fourth joint. So the degree of freedom of this mechanism uh, is um, we just insert it in our formula and find that it's three times seven minus eight minus one, eight is the J plus the degrees of freedom of uh, each uh, joint. So seven minus eight is minus one minus one minus one is minus two. You get three times minus two is six. Minus six plus nine is three, which means that this mechanism has a lot of slackness, lots of mobility. You need to control it with three uh, motors or something, okay? It's, it's very uh, loose if you want to uh, say so. For example, this mechanism comes out to have a degree of freedom of three. So three input sources are needed to control this mechanism, as I have said. Now, this is a, a hydraulic mechanism that is used in the construction machinery at Rancho. This is an illustrative example. It's, it's a, there is a lot of um, we are looking at the following thing, not to this one. Let's look at the, the following thing. We are counting the, the, the links here. One is kind of, the, this is the ground of this mechanism, okay? Although it is also possible to move it. We assume that uh, this is the ground. Uh, two and three is a hydraulic piston. This is a four is this link we see over here. Okay. Any questions? Five and six is again another hydraulic piston. Seven is this link. Eight and nine is another hydraulic piston. They all have prismatic joints there. 10 is this link, okay? 11 is this link, 12 is this whole thing. That's all, number of links is 12. 
you have three hydraulic pistons here. One, two, the two and three is a hydraulic piston. Five and six is a hydraulic piston. Eight and nine is a hydraulic piston. Okay, and actually, uh, each of these are are actuators. Each of them are going to uh, actuate this uh, arm, and you might you should expect that the degree of freedom of this thing is three, which we will find out to be correct. How about the joints? Let's look at the joints here. Um, one is the revolute joint, two is a revolute joint. Okay. Three, four, five, these are all revolute joints, seven, eight, Nine, ten, ten revolute joints. Eleven, twelve is what? Okay, uh, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Where is the twelfth one? I don't see actually. Ha <laughs> ha, here you have a uh, triple joint, that's why. Well, you, here you have two joints, that's why we call it two pins. And there are three sliders. Where are the three sliders? They, they are between the pistons, hydraulic pistons. Okay. So between two and three is one prismatic joint, six and five is another, eight and nine, another prismatic joint. And we see that it is all degrees of freedom are one. And we put it in our equation, three times L minus J minus one uh, plus sigma Fi, three times uh, L is 12, 15 is J, num J, and then minus one. So you get three times 12, three, sorry, three times minus four is minus 12 plus 15, you get a degree of freedom of three. And all these degrees of freedom, each of them is controlled by a hydraulic piston, as you see. The operator operates those hydraulic pistons in order to make the motions possible, okay? Any question about this? So we, as we said, three hydraulics are used to control the position of the bucket. Here we have another example. Um, again, ground is one. Let's count the uh, links first. Two, three, four, five, six, Seven is this whole thing. This whole thing, if if you have <coughs> lines through it, it means that it acts like a rigid body. It is a rigid body, but on which there are uh, links. Okay, this is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you have eleven. Uh, eleven. Uh, L is eleven. <coughs> On the other hand, well, let's count the number of joints. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, one, two, well, you should count some of the, this is the trickier part. Uh, I'm sorry. <coughs> the, um, you have to count some of these as two. For example, this is one, two, three, four. These are all one joints. But then uh, this is a one joint, but this is a two joint. This is a two joint. Uh, this is a two joint. This is a two joint, etc. So you have to count them correctly. And if you don't do that, you will make a mistake, obviously.
Now, three, four, so, six. Yes, this is a this uh, this is a little bit. Just a second. Let me just show it to you. Three, four, six is one joint. Two, four, five is another joint. Um, five, seven, eight is another one. Eight, ten, eleven is another one. Okay. Yes, is there a question? So we, we count it as one, eight, ten, eleven? No, eight, ten, eleven. Uh, where is that? Eight, ten, eleven is counted as two. But, Each of uh, these is counted as two. Okay. So may, may I ask, like, we count as like uh, eight connected to ten and also eight connected to eleven. So we count it as two joints, right? Yes. But uh, there is also like 10 connected to 11. So can yes, we but count it as? That's redundant kind of, we don't do that because if you connect, for example, eight to 10 and 10 to 11, it, it basically uh, achieves our purpose, okay? You don't really connect eight to 11 again. You connect eight to 10 and 10 to 11. And uh, you have two uh, two joints there, not three joints. Okay. Thank you. So uh, let's see. Ajahn. Yes. Previously, when we calculated the degree of freedom for the ternary joint, there was two grounds and we counted it as one. Why don't we do the same here? Where is the ground here? There is four grounds, right? Excuse me? There is four joints that you counted as ground. You mean this one? Uh, no, no, no. The like the bottom four. Ah, yes, this is ground. Is ah, that no. counted as one joint? No. Well, no. These are each of them are jo joints. We didn't count them yet. We link. Uh, ground is the link number one. Here we have. 11 links we have found out. We didn't count the joints yet. Ah, uh, yes, but will that be counted as one joint or Sorry? will they be counted as, will they be counted as one joint only or no, as no, separate? No, 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 each of them is one joint. Ah, uh, okay. Let's, Thank let's you. count them by one by one. Okay. okay. This is one. Here you have two joints. Here you have two joints. Here you have one joint one joint one joint okay here you have two joints here you have two joints here you have one one anything else yes you have one here did i miss anything i don't know usually uh, so let's count them now uh one three five six seven nine, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16. No, I made a mistake somewhere. Um, let's count it again. Six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16. Hmm. Why does this happen? You did it correct, Ojan. It's calculation mistake. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, this is 16. Okay. Maybe. It adds up to 15, Ojan. Huh? It adds up to 15. It's not 16. Why? You tell me. Okay, Ojan. So the first one is uh, from starting from link two, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then fifteen. But when I count it, I find six. Let's count it from here. Four here, five, six, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. How does this happen? Let's count it again. Six, seven, nine, ten, eleven. 13, 14, 16. Well, that's very strange. Four, 
five, six, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. On one side, I count from probably it's 15, but I make a mistake somewhere. Yes, tell me. Uh, in the seventh one, is it on top we said two, but is it three? No, it's two. You are connecting link five, seven, and five, eight, and seven. So there are two links here. But the funny thing is I count from this side, I get 15. I count from that side, I get 16. I don't know why. I'm making a mistake, obviously, but where? John, both ways, it's 15. It's 15, Ajit. It's 15, OK. Uh, probably I'm making a mistake somewhere. OK. So it is 15, that's right. This is, this is correct. OK. Um, in any case, uh, each of them is a revolute joint. So the FI is sigma FI is 15. Uh, so three uh, times 11 is the number of links minus 15 minus one. So you get what? Uh, three times 15 minus 15 plus 15 is a zero. So this is, this is a structure which doesn't move at all. It, is, uh, it has no degrees of freedom. Okay. Okay. So now this is an interesting example. As you have said, this is a spatial four bar mechanism, a four bar mechanism that moves in space. Um, Three, you have four links here, but the lambda, this, uh, this moves in space. Let me actually, before going into this, uh, let me show you this by, mm, how can we do that? Oh, let me see. I just want to show you something on YouTube. Uh, to show you how it moves. want to make a video like this of myself i can just make a really cute one of caricature Come with on. me hi i'm brad callen and in this video i'm going to show you how anyone i'm can sorry this is about this is getting... just like the one you're watching right now okay i just wanted to show you a very short video about you four bar mechanism but it became Okay, I guess you can see it now. So this is a spatial four bar mechanism. Let me show it to you again. It's a four bar, but it has, it's moving in space. So it is very much used, for example, it might be used in uh, windshield wipers. It is a four bar, but it has, it is more interesting. It makes more interesting motions. And there are other kind of spatial four bar mechanisms. Okay, let's go back to our YouTube. Okay. PowerPoint, that is. Yeah. 
So in this uh, thing, in this mechanism, we have four links, one being the ground, uh, two is the second link, three is the middle link, four is this uh, link that connects, again, ground to the to this joint. You have two spherical joints, sorry, two spherical joints, one spherical, two spherical here, okay? And two revolute joints. These are revolute joints, only allow degrees of freedom of rotation for links two and four with respect to one, okay? So the number of links is four. Number of joints is four. You have two spherical joints and two revolute joints. The degree of freedom of space lambda is six. Uh, sigma fi, this is interesting. Now for spherical joints, the degree of freedom is three. Uh, for revolute joints, it's one. Uh, so, three times two is six plus two for revolute each of them. It becomes a, a eight degree of freedom. We insert everything to our equation. Six times four minus four minus one. So you get a six minus, well, it's a minus six plus eight. Now you get two. So the degree of freedom of a Spatial four bar mechanism is two. On the other hand, I showed you on the video. Adam? Yes. Uh, what is the ground here again? Ground is the ground. It's here, it is the ground. This is the ground. This is the ground. Okay. okay thank you. Um, the degree of freedom comes out to be two. But in the video I have shown you, you see that uh, you can move the video, sorry, you can move the mechanism simply by a, uh, you know, hand operated arm. So it looks like the degree of freedom of this mechanism is one. So what is the catch there? What is the problem here? What is the, uh, well, there is something that we are missing here. And what is that, do you think? The spherical joints? Yes, it has to do with the spherical joints. Well, degrees of freedom, degree of freedom, actually, there are two degrees of freedom in this mechanism. One is the following, if you, uh, what is this? Huh? If you rotate this thing, this whole thing rotates as for example, if you rotate it, this thing also makes a strange rotation. But there is another possible motion, which is this link three. This link three, because of the spherical joint can rotate around itself. Okay, just like uh, around itself without affecting the other uh, parts of the mechanism. So this has a uh, link T3 has a, a, so to say, a redundant, redundant degree of freedom. Uh, so it rotates around itself. But that rotation does not affect the general motion of the mechanism. And when we say that F is equal to two, what we are counting is one general degree of freedom of the mechanism and the redundant degree of freedom of this link three, uh, which rotates around itself. In spatial mechanisms, we have such possible redundant degrees of freedoms, uh, but we don't have that in spatial, sorry, in, in 2D, in the planar mechanisms, okay. This is an interesting example which shows that there, there might be uh, degrees of freedom which do not contribute to the total motion of the mechanism in the spatial mechanisms, okay? You can just rotate this link three like with your finger, 
if you like, without affecting the motion of the mechanism at all. I guess you understand what I mean. Hocam, uh, <laughs> may you explain how you interpret the uh, degree of freedom by looking at the mechanism? Like you said, just there is one uh, uh, one arm that rotates the system, so we assume there is a one degree of freedom of mechanism. You mean this example or anything Look, else? Generally, generally, yeah. No, generally, like, well, basically the degree of freedom shows how many inputs do you need to operate the mechanism, okay? And for this spatial four bar mechanism, we need only one input to operate it. For example, for a robot, you need many inputs. For this, uh, let me, what was that? Where is that? For this trend show, we need three inputs, for example. So the degree of freedom is three. You have three pistons, right? Yes. But for, so I showed you with the video, Minute. with the video that the spatial four bar mechanism needs only one input. So the degree of freedom should be one. But there but, is also the rotator. But we find that the equation of motion, well, the sorry, degree of freedom equation shows that it is two, which is correct. Actually, the degree of freedom of this mechanism is two. Uh, but there is a degree of freedom, which is redundant, uh, which means that this link three can rotate around itself without affecting the mechanism. So the degree of freedom, the real degree of freedom of the mechanism is, um, it depends on how you interpret it. It is two, but uh, for the mechanism only, it is one, okay. Uh, well, how you come to find that for, for the, you see, this is a simple example for a space mechanism and space mechanisms are hard, difficult. So we don't really deal with them as I have said. So uh, for the time being, we will just give you this example and then stop. Okay. Um, there are, um, actually there is this thing, but I'll do this thing next time. I'll continue with uh, some more examples. What is the time? Actually the time is almost, uh, I'll just do a few more examples here. Uh, Jamal, I had a question. Yes. So Hojam, uh, the degree of freedom of the joints would always give in the degree of freedom of the whole mechanism. Excuse me, say, can you repeat? The degree of freedom of individual joints would always govern the degree of freedom of the whole mechanism. Well, it is not just the joints. It is, it is the number of links. It is the uh, position of the joints, number of joints and what kind of joints they, they are, okay? Degree of freedom is governed by that. All right, thank you, Hajar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, let me uh, solve a single problem uh, from, um, let me see. I have to do that, how do we do, let me see how I would do it. Okay. Let me close the PowerPoint now. Um, not okay.
Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. Something strange happened. I don't know what happened, but uh, as I said, I'm not. So share screen. Let me uh, share this whiteboard. You can see it, right? You can see this blackboard, not the whiteboard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so let me so try to solve a problem here uh, by drawing it here. So we will have the following. A revolute joint connected to it a gear. Connected to it is another, uh, is another gear drawn better like here. Um, and connected to it is another gear. And all these are connected by a link like this. You have a prismatic joint here. And another prismatic joint. Excuse my drawing, but this is what I could draw. Um, so uh, this is the mechanism in which we want to find the, the number of uh, degree of freedom of the mechanism. So let's try to analyze it. Uh, the ground is one, the gears are two. I'm just counting the number of links. This is five, this is six. This is seven. The ground is one again. Seven, eight, and nine. So the number of links is nine. Let's see the joints. There is a gear joint here. There is another gear joint here. You have revolute joints. R, R, R. Ah, this is, uh, okay. Uh, another R. This revolute joint is is a two R because it connects uh, one, two, and five, as you see. This is R. This is a R. This is a P. This is a P. This is a R. This is a R. So you have. Let's count the R's first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have eight revolute joints, two prismatic joints plus two P plus two gear joints. So J is 12, right? Number of joints is 12. The Summation of the degrees of freedom is eight plus two plus two times two. The gears have a degree of freedom of two. So it is 10 plus 14. And the degree of freedom is lambda L minus J minus one plus sigma Fi. And what we get is, Three times 
f what was f 9 minus j 10 you know, 12 minus 1 plus 14 9 minus 12 minus 3 minus 4 minus 12 plus 14 it is 2 so f is equal to 2 is our result okay Any questions about this or any questions in general? I will stop here and continue the next time with still more examples. And then we will continue with uh, the, the so-called uh, Grubler's equation uh, and enumeration and inversions and etc. cetera. Some, some topics which are related to degrees of freedom. Thank you, Arjun. Okay, you are welcome. So, uh, in, yes, in the question, uh, the link five, does it does the link five not constrain the uh, translation motion of the gears? Um, I guess I have to share the screen again. Just a second. No, it doesn't. This is this is a typical arrangement in which. Uh, the gears are connected with an arm. To a certain extent it does, but uh, without that, uh, the gears would, this gearing would simply fall apart. You know, without that fifth arm, uh, that gearing wouldn't be, you know, connected to each other. Can the gears still translate with, with this arm? Yes, gears can rotate around this thing, around this arm. But they cannot translate, right? Can they? No, it cannot. It, they can just rotate with respect to each other. Then, then why do we take the degree of freedom for gears as two in this case? Well, I explain why we take the degree of freedom of gear joint as two. You, you no, I understand the universal case. Why we take the degree of freedom in gears, gears case? Shouldn't it gears be one because? Say it again. In the universal case, I understand that uh, the gears can both translate and rotate. But in this case, when when the link five is constraining it to move it uh, to have translation motion, shouldn't we take it as one? Well, two gears like this, uh, when they are connected to each other, like with two revolute joints, I gave you an example. This is supposedly connected. Whoa. The degree of freedom of this whole thing is one. We found that out, right? But the degree of freedom of two gears, well, as joints, um, uh, uh, if you have a gear pair, the f, f of this thing is two. That's, so if you assume that f is two, what you get is this capital F becomes one when you have revolute joints connected to here. I have shown you this. The gear pair has a degree of freedom of two because by itself, without the revolute joints, the gears can translate and rotate with respect to each other. Okay. Without uh, the revolute joints do the trick of making them mesh with each other. Do you understand? Yes, thank you, Arjun. Okay. Hojan? Yes. Like the, the calculations we made are true for the systems that are working. Like we know that the system is working, right? Yes, well, because they like, might not. It, you see, if you get a, uh, you know, f is equal to zero, and it might not work. It might just uh, make no motion at all. No, no, I mean, like for f equals to two or f equals to one. Yes. 
like uh, we calculated it but uh, in the example you draw like if the fifth link is too short and the kernel of the uh, the plane uh, box box links are too long the link is not uh, long enough to get in there so there's an obstacle to work so it may you not mean work this one, right yes the fifth fifth link is like let's say if it if it is too short so uh, and the kennel of the seventh link is too long so the, the sixth link is not uh enough that like it doesn't have the angle to get in properly at the kernel yeah well both those are those are you see uh, more advanced problems kind of at this point we are looking at the mm -hmm. uh, the the things the the general idea of degree of freedom there are certain mm -hmm. positions of the mechanisms in which the position of the mechanism might get singular and the mechanisms can get locked but these mm -hmm. are things we will see later on okay like but it doesn't I, Hmm? I'm just asking for like we can say uh, when we like calculate the degree of freedom, we can't directly say this system will work properly all no, the time. No, it's not. Sometimes, yeah, if the dimensions are not proper, it might not work. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, thank you, Ujo. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, so let me stop this. Actually, yeah, operating with Zoom is 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 harder than operating with Blackboard with the Collaborate, I guess. Anyway, I'll think about it and see what we will do the next time. It's easier to ask questions with Zoom, but we'll see. Hocam, also the quality 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 of the PDFs are higher over here. Zoom is better, right? Yeah, it is a it is a better program. Obviously, it is a more developed program, but I'm not very much used to it. That's the problem. I guess maybe if you as we get used to it, it will be better. Okay, let me stop the recording. By the way, how how do we do this? Yeah.